You know, for those who are fans of Star Trek The Next Generation, the first season of the uh, series had a lot of good aspects, a lot of mediocre episodes, and a few bummers. Now, today we're going to be talking about <coughs> what a lot of people believe is the worst episode ever of Star Trek The Next Generation because of its racist overtones, its uh, uh, poor direction, uh, bad special effects, bad plot, Code of Honor. Now, when this first came out, we were shocked to see uh, an all-black cast for an episode that basically didn't require it. And the way that the black uh, characters are treated in the show is, as Jonathan Fra Frakes once said publicly, it's a racist piece of shit. He said that in 2011 at a, uh, at a big event uh, in the States. Now, we're going over some basics of the episode, including how one of the original director was fired because of his uh, plot choices. Now, Call of Honor is the fourth episode of the first season of Star Trek Next Generation. It was in broadcast, uh, broadcast syndication. In most uh, locales, it was shown on October 12, 1987. The episode was written by Catherine Powers and Michael Barrow and was directed at first by Russ Mayberry. Mayberry was eventually fired partway through the filming by Gene Roddenberry, uh, with first assistant director Les Landau taking over. Now set in the 21st century, 24th century the uh, series follows the adventures of the Starfleet crew of the Federation Starship Enterprise D. In this episode, while well, Water Ship is visiting the planet L Ligons 2 to re retrieve a vaccine, crew Natasha Yar, played by Denise Crosby, is abducted by the leader of Ligonians. Uh, the race abide by strict court of honor, and their leader seeks to use Yar as a pawn to increase his power. Now, Pawers and Barrow pitch the story based on a reptilian race following a code similar to the Bushida code of the samurai. <coughs> this was developed into the final story, which was described as having a 1940s tribal Af uh, Africa theme by staff writer Tracy Torme. The episode wasn't well received amongst the cast and crew, but Maurice Hurley thought the basic premise had promise. The episode was received negatively by reviewers after the series ended, including being described as well, one of, quite possibly, the, the worst piece of Star Trek ever made, and probably one of the most racist uh, piece of TV of the 1980s. Now, in the plot, the Enterprise ar arrives in a pl uh, planet Lagoon 2, uh, Lagoon 2 to acquire a vaccine needed to come back an outbreak of Anchilles fever on Cyrus 4. The crew, possessing little information on the Lagonian culture, finds and follows strict customs of status similar to ancient China. Specifically, while the men in their culture rule society, the land itself is controlled by the women. Now, Lutan, played by Jesse Lawrence Ferguson, the Lagonian leader, transfers up to the Enterprise to provide a sample of vaccine, as impressed by Lieutenant Tashi Yar's status as head of security. Yar further demonstrates her Aikido skills against a holographic opponent for Lutan on the holodeck. After a tour of the ship, Lutan and the Lagonians abduct Yar as they transport back to the surface. Captain Jean-Luc Picard, played by Patrick Stewart, demands that Lutan return Yar, considering the kidnapping of Act of War, but receives no response from the planet. After consultation with his officers, Picard determines that Lutan took Yar in a counting coup as a show of heroism. Picard contacts Lutan in a more peaceful manner, who grants permission for the Enterprise crew to beam down to the planet and promises to return Yar after a banquet in his honor. Now, Lutan announces at the banquet that he wishes to make Yar his first one, surprising not only the Enterprise crew, but also the Yarina Colonel uh, Selman, who is already Lutan's uh, first one. Yarina challenges Yar to a fight to the death to claim back the position. When Picard objects to the fight, Lutan refuses to give the Enterprise the rest of the vaccine until unless Yar participates. The crew investigates the combat ritual and find that the weapons used are coated with a lethal poison, and also there is Yarina's well to which Lutan owes his possession. Picard prepares to have Yar beam to the Enterprise should she be armed in the battle. As the match progresses, both Yarina and Yar are equally skilled, but Yar eventually lands a strike on Yarina. Yar quickly covers Yarina and orders the transport of both of them to the Enterprise against the demands of Lutan. Aboard the ship, Dr. Crusher, Gates McFadden, reaches Yarina moments after death, but is able to counteract the poison and revive her. When Lutan demands to defeat Yarina, Crusher reveals that Yarina died, thus sealing the match to Yar and breaking the first one bond. 
Yarin is now free to select a new mate, and she chooses Hagon, James Lewis Watkins, one of Lutan's bodyguards, who is in love with Yarina, and effectively strips Lutan's position of power and makes her, him her second one. Hagon lets Yar go and gives the Enterprise her full supply of vaccine. Now, writer Catherine Powers were invited to pitch a story for TNG as she was friends with Star Trek writer DC Fontana. Alongside her writing partner, Michael Barrow, Powers pitched a story involving a reptilian race called the, called the Tilesians, who followed the code of honor similar to that of Samurai. A rougher script of the aliens went through several changes before making it to the screen. Now, Powers would go on to write the season one episode of Emancipation for Stargate SG-1, which held similar themes to Code of Honor. Now, the African theme of the episode was brought in by director Ross Mayberry, who had a Lagodian's race cast entirely from African-American actors. Mayberry was fired for decision during production by Gene Roddenberry, and first assistant director Les Landau completed the episode. Star Trek novel author Keith D. Candido later recalled that this was because of the casting itself, while cast member Will Wheaton, who played Wesley Crusher, thought that was because Bayberry was racist towards the guest stars after they were cast. Six of one, half dozen of the other. Now, staff writer Tracy Tormé was not pleased with the 1940s tribal Africa theme of the aliens, and because the combat scene towards the end of the episode resembled a Kirk versus Spock fight in a mock time. Fellow Star Trek writer Maurice Hurley also said that it was a good idea, but the execution, no pun intended, just fell apart. Again, if you take the script and if the actors have been told to give it a different twist, that show would have been different, but it became too baroque and fell apart. But the concept of having a guy say, I'll have to have somebody kill my wife, and this is the person, is a good idea. Now, some of the cast, including Freaks, sought to prevent the episode from being re-aired. Michael Dorn, uh, one of the black members of the cast, wished they hadn't done the episode and he was glad he was not in it. What a surprise. In 2012 interview, Patrick Stewart agreed with fans that considered the season 2 episode The Measure of a Man to be the first truly great episode of the series, stating that the first season had several quite weak episodes, referring to Court of Honor in particular. He said, I can think of one very on early on that involved a race of black aliens that we feel all, all we felt quite embarrassed about. I tend to disagree. There's some good season one episodes, uh, especially with the Klingons and conspiracy as well. Uh, I think he's, you know, he's getting he's getting on in years. I think he was 70 when we made the comment. But some good season one episodes, I have to, have to admit. Now, the episode also saw the first appearance of the black and yellow grid structure of the empty holodeck. However, the interface unit used by Yar, which resembled a corded phone, was not seen again, with crew members using vocal commands to program the holodeck in future episodes. Captain Picard also showed pride in his French language in this episode. This character quirk was later very repeated, such as in the following episode, The Last Outpost, and by singing Fair Jacques and Disaster while escaping a turbo shaft with three children in tow. Now, Cold of Honor aired in broadcast syndication again, October 1287. Big Nielsen ratings of 9.5, reflecting the percentage of all households watching the episode during its time slot. However, this was lower than ratings received by the two episodes preceding it, but higher than the 8.9 received by the following episode, The Last Outpost. Now, uh, several reviewers rewatched the episode following the end of the season. Wheaton reviewed it in April 2008 for AOL TV. He couldn't remember actually appearing in the episode, and it was the first time since it was originally broadcast that he had seen it. He said that it wasn't good, but it was not as overly racist as I recall. I mean, it's certainly not as racist as Angel 1 is sexist, and if the Lagonians hadn't been arbitrarily determined to be entirely African American, it wouldn't have been an issue. Uh, he said that the episode was an example of the type of episodes in the first season that could, would have resulted in a show being cancelled mid-season if it hadn't been so well supported by the fans and run directly into syndication. Now, uh, the, the race of tropes that are talked about are there, but I, 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 uh, I saw it first run, and I do remember uh, a TV uh, reviewer talking about the episode. He said, well, it's like an uh, early season, uh, what do you call... Uh, uh, it, it hadn't reached its peak or hasn't reached its momentum because usually what happens the first 10 episodes of any series the series only gets good around episode 11 or 12 and that's what happened to Star Trek uh, Next Generation the, the last goodbye is strong as well now uh, 
In 2016, fans at the 50th anniversary Star Trek convention voted a Court of Honor as the second worst episode of any Star Trek series behind the pioneering Star Trek Enterprise series uh, finale, These Are the Voyagers. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, Spock's brain was pretty bad, and the way to Eden is very terrible. Now, in 2017, Screen Rant uh, ranked Code of Honor, the second worst episode of the entire Star Trek franchise, and it was uh, 2019. They ranked in the seven worst episode of the franchise based on IMDb rankings. Now, in 2009, they ranked it in the fourth worst, fourth worst episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation, with a 5.2 out of 10 at a time on IMDb. Now, <coughs> the... Uh, the first home video media release of Code of Honor was on VHS on September 5th, 91 in the United States and Canada. I think it was 29.95, very high. The episode was later included on the Star Trek Next Generation Season 1 DVD box set, which was released in March 2002, and was released on Blu-ray on July 24th, 2012, as part of that Season 1 set. Now, episodes of Encounter at Four Point to Data Lore were released in Japan on Laserdisc on June 10th, 95, as part of first season of Pirates Part 1. This included the first season episode Court of Honor and is set as a total runtime of 638 minutes across a multiple 12 inch optical video disc. Now, again, uh, the episode I give it a 5 out of 10. There's some, you know, there's some, some good action sequences, but you can't get over the fact it's a bunch of people. Uh, that are uh, judging a culture and it's got that 21st century well they're black and you know their tribalism and all that it, it comes across again as unfortunate that they didn't catch on to what they were doing uh, it was of its time 1987, 88 they were still having some problems understanding how culture didn't have to be color culture culture could be multiple you know uh, multiple backgrounds uh, but sometimes Star Trek had, had problems like the, the there was a pro IRA episode and he had uh, basically uh, what he call uh, uh, embryos being murdered by their own the ones that were created from you know it's it is Star Trek there's bound to be uh, no non perfection as you go through so uh, if you want to see what it's like uh, Corner Water is like it's on Netflix obviously you look at it you tell me uh, what you think give me a like comment or subscribe I'd like to know you as listeners think of this Star Trek season one kind of up and down thing because the audio is off the music is too loud there's some scenes in Court of Honor just you know completely bizarre like why was the the crewman running away after Tasha Yar gets, you know, rebeamed, uh, you know, beamed off the planet. Pretty bizarre. Thanks for listening. Bye.